am Dr. Angeline Yong, consultant dermatologist and dermatological surgeon. In today's video, we're going to talk to you about injectables. They're broadly a category used to describe botulinum toxin injections and filler injections. So we will summarize this for you in a nutshell and go through when you can use them and what are the contraindications as well. Botulinum toxins versus fillers. So what are they used for and when you know you should select one over the other or when you should use both? So they're both largely injectable class medications that we utilize for anti-aging purposes. I would like to think of botulinum toxin as really suitable for the upper half of the face and fillers largely for work in the lower half of the face. So botulinum toxin is really a chemical uh, it can be used to reduce the muscle activity in select muscle groups that you're trying to reduce action in and so that reduces fine lines. But in general, it can also be used to achieve certain um, outcomes. Like I mentioned, it can help to create a little bit of a brow lift by balancing the two muscle groups. One that pulls down on the brow and one that lifts the brow. So understanding botulinum toxin is crucial because you need to first understand facial expressions and how muscle groups work together and against one another. Fillers on the other hand, typically are a wide range of injectables that are used to volumize the face. So the most common chemical substance in a filler would typically be hyaluronic acid. HA fillers are the most popular because they can be easily and readily dissolved. You can use hyaluronidase, which is a chemical that we can use as an anti antidote to you know, fillers. So hyaluronic acid fillers are typically very nicely utilized for anti-aging purposes in your lower half of the face because that's where you start to see things like sagging. So like I mentioned, in the upper third or the upper half of the face, you see a lot more lines because of very strong muscle activity in the area because you express a lot with those muscle groups. And the lower half, people are concerned about, oh, my jawline definition, you know, is, is, uh, is being reduced. I start to see more, you know, sort of like, sort of like sad lines around my mouth area. You see a bit of jowls as we call them. We also see this strong, what we call melolabial folds. So HA fillers can be placed strategically on bone to give you a lot of structure to lift the overlying tissue and then allow a little bit of pullback as it suspends and supports just like the structure at the base of a building. It can sort of also be used to fill some of the deeper lines and fine lines as well. So that is like the surface treatment that HA, suitable HA fillers can be used to deliver um, as well. So in, in general HA fillers, you, you need to understand what kind of filler is being used, what brand is being used, the technology behind it, and also then the viscosity of the filler. So in summary, I typically would like to think of both botulinum toxin and filler HA injections as part of an injectable toolkit that you can utilize to rejuvenate the face and sort of um, create basically um, you know, a younger, more youthful looking face by relaxing um, dynamic lines um, so that you prevent permanent lines from being formed and also to be used to re-volumize and reposition um, saggy tissue. When should you not use botulinum toxin or when should you not use HA fillers? Well, it really depends after we access and see what your primary concern is. Sometimes patients come asking me you know, about under eye rejuvenation, they're concerned about maybe dark eye circles and they think that maybe under eye fillers are going to fix the dark eye circles. But it really depends on what the under eye dark circles are caused by. If that dark eye circle is caused by friction, like you've been rubbing, you have chronic sinus, you have eczema around the eyes, or you just habitually like to rub when you're tired, then causing frictional dermatitis would lead to hyperpigmentation in the under eye circle area. And then I would then tell the patient that actually they don't really need fillers. What they really need to do is to stop habitual rubbing, use a topical agent to decrease the inflammation in that area, and then sort of maybe consider some lightening agents downstream. Fillers are really good for fixing under eye tear trap. However, if they also have concomitant other issues and they come to you telling you that I have very puffy eyes and my eyes always swell. You know, sometimes what they need is like maybe two cold spoons in the fridge, and just cold massage down the area or cold cucumber. They really don't need under eye fillers because fillers are hyaluronic acids, right? 
So what does HA do? HA binds water avidly. It's going to draw even more water and cause even more puffiness or swelling. So that's like a no-go zone. When would I not use botulinum toxin? If they're 20s, great, right? But if they're in their like late 30s to 40s and they're starting to already have a little bit of laxity around the jawline, I would be very cautious and tell them that by reducing the muscle activity of this group of muscles called the masseter muscle, I would basically cause disuse atrophy where the muscle becomes thinner and smaller and hence you achieve that V-shaped contour that you want. But as a result, this muscle being smaller then causes you to lose volume. Okay, injectables are not just all about aesthetics and about cosmetic improvement. They can be absolutely utilized for medical indications as well. So when can they be used for these purposes? For example, a patient that tends to grind and wear down their teeth persistently at night, tends to bite and tends to chew very hard and already has worn down the, the, the surfaces of their molars. Now, absolutely, we can reduce the muscle activity by using botulinum toxin to reduce this teeth grinding. If a patient is trying to just reduce the muscle activity in this area so that they don't clench and don't bite as hard, you do not need to use as much botulinum toxin as you would in a patient who's trying to achieve a different face shape. Other times that we can also use that for medical indications could be when there is asymmetry of the face. For example, some people may be born uh, with a slightly smaller half of the face and I've, I've had patients like that before where maybe the, the, the chin is slightly reduced on one side or the lip is slightly smaller or the, even the, the, the cheek might be a little bit smaller as well and they're conscious about that. Sometimes utilizing um, HA fillers can be very nice because you can sort of like really create a slight asymmetry. Um, it has very good outcome uh, from that standpoint as well. So it can be used to, to fix certain problems that are pre-existing or it can be used to also improve certain medical conditions as I mentioned like grinding or even um, you know patients with migraines they can also have botulinum toxin for like um, treating the uh, migraines that they have as well. So in today's video I shared a little bit in a nutshell about injectables like botulinum toxin and HA fillers and when they can be utilized. Hope you learn a lot from that and see whether you're a suitable candidate for either botulinum toxin, um, HA fillers or both. I'm Dr. Angeline Yong, consultant dermatologist, dermatological surgeon, sub-specialized in cosmetic dermatology and, and a COC trainer in both fillers and botulinum toxin, key opinion leader in various aesthetic devices including botulinum toxin and fillers. Thank you very much for following me. Um, if you like our content, do follow us on our social media channels to learn more. Thank you.